right. So um, as I kind of spoke about on the detail page of for this document uh, sign class, I definitely wanted to um, kind of go over a few things that we've talked about in the past and things that may be a little bit more elementary, like, you know, just kind of uh, linking your DocuSign and all that. But I did want to, you know, in this video, we're going to start talking about how we can really streamline how we can write an offer and, um, and additionally, um, leverage some other tools to help kind of streamline everything because, uh, you know, I'll be the first one to admit it was a little tedious. It was taking me about an hour to write, you know, an offer every single time. And that's because I had to start a new room and, you know, write out all the all the terms and conditions and fill in all the blanks with some dashes so I didn't have like empty spots in my contract and doing that each time was a little tedious. And so I want to show you guys what I've been doing um, to help, uh, you know, minimize that down. So here in the next hour, kind of go over everything that I've been kind of doing. So for those that have not yet, um, I have a good feeling about 80, 90 percent of us have because, you know, it's where we need to pull our documents from. But I want to make sure that everybody knows that if you have not linked your DocuSign yet, where you do that is where I, you just watched me click, which is I clicked up here by my picture and profile settings, command training and logout. You click on settings and that will bring you to this page. And on this page, uh, DocuSign happens to be here at the top. But if you don't have it at the top, um, it's because you haven't connected it yet. So it's going to show your connected applications first. So you can see all the applications I have connected so far. But it, in the event that you don't see it, if you just scroll down enough, it'll eventually show up just like this DocuSign. And it'll ask you to, you know, connect. Uh, no different than some of the other applications. I think if I scroll down, I have pretty much everything connected, but here's an example like Twitter, you know, connect account. So the DocuSign one would say the same. Very important to note, if you already have DocuSign, uh, maybe you were paying for an account or got it through another application, but if you pay, if you have a DocuSign account and go to connect and use the email for that other account, other DocuSign account, it will not work. For this to talk to command, you need to create a new DocuSign account uh, through KW's relationship with DocuSign. So if you put in your email that you've been using with DocuSign in the past, it may give you an error um, saying this account already exists. And when you go to link it, you'll have a really tough time. What other agents have done, have they have uh, called DocuSign and or logged into that account and switched the email to one that they don't really use, you know, maybe a, an extra Gmail account or whatever. Another option you could do is leave that all alone if it wasn't a KW email or if it was and use a new email that you hadn't before for this KW account. I just leave that up to you. I personally wanted to make sure that my real estate email that my clients are used to was the email used for my KW DocuSign account. So, so that may be a little bit of work, but if you've never used DocuSign ever before, then you should be good. You would just hit connect. And sorry, I won't be able to give an example of this since I have mine connected, but you hit connect more, you put in and, you know, say you create a new account, put in your email and DocuSign will do its thing on the back end to make an account for you. So once you have connected the account, you're going to be good to go. And so I'm going to head over to our opportunities. And since today's about DocuSign, I'm not going to get too uh, hung up on, you know, creating an opportunity and all that. So this part's going to be pretty fast because I really want to focus more on DocuSign today. So I'm going to just make a dummy uh, opportunity. And I'm just, I think I have a, a Bob Smith that I've made in my, or a Bob somebody. There we go. This Bob Jones I've kind of had for um, making some dummy opportunities. So your market center will uh, go by default unless you've ever been with another market center. Just make sure it is your Phoenix Anthem one since, uh, you know, here at KWNE. Uh, your opportunity type, you want to make sure to get that right because you can't change the opportunity type later. 
right? So if you say it's listing, it's going to go into your listing pipeline. You can't say, oh, sorry, this was supposed to be a buyer. So just make sure of that. Pick your client. If you don't have the client uploaded yet, go make them in contacts. Um, but again, that was just some quick notes on your opportunity. So test opportunity, just so I can archive that later. And you do anything with the red asterisk you have to fill out. So I will say that this is 3%. I'll say that it's active because that's why I'm making it because I want to go write an offer and I didn't make the opportunity before. And I'll say we're in negotiations. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. This will refresh and land me on the details page of the opportunity. Um, again, from here, it's up to you if you want to put an address in and all that good stuff. Um, it's supposed to pull that over into DocuSign. I know that has been kind of hit and miss. But again, um, that part of it, uh, I'll show you not as important you want, when it comes to using DocuSign for you know things to sync. Um, Ideally, if the buyer's name and email come over, that's fantastic. So we want to head over to the Documents tab because that's what's going to give us access to the area we need to. Now, um, I am going to make a note on this video that one thing that Jerry did for us before, um, you know, uh, stepping out of the managing broker role, um, and I am really appreciate that she did was she made checklist types for us instead of just one generic one. If you remember, when you went to the documents tab, it would already say like, you know, for a buyer, it would say consultation under contract closed. For a listing, it would say listed under contract and closed. Those now, um, the reason it doesn't say that now is because you we were able to make checklists specific to the type of uh, transaction that you would be partaking in. So if you click on the down arrow here, you now can say, well, I'm going to be doing a residential one, a new build, a commercial, or a land purchase, right? So in this case, I'm just going to leverage the residential one. And there you can see it now. There are, there's the consultation under contract and close. As you guys know, we don't have anything in our consultation folder. That's just if you'd like to leverage that, you know, maybe a buyer broker agreement or you had Maybe you have something that you personally use in your business that you got signed and, you know, you just want a folder uh, to be able to upload those things. And then, of course, you can have leverage the custom folder as well. For this buyer, we know that under contract is when things, you know, come into play. So what was really cool about this checklist is now you'll notice that it doesn't say purchase contract, new build purchase contract, land and lot commercial right it only says purchase contract once because we now have a strictly residential checklist compared to a new build checklist a commercial so those contracts would go into these respective ones here okay so now back to um, the DocuSign portion of it when you land on your opportunity documents tab you're going to see this big old black button right here start a transaction in my case, again, trying to learn every aspect of this um, system, I have dot loop and DocuSign linked up. I never really used dot loop. Um, my transaction coordinator did. You know, I had an account, had my files in there, so I did link it up. But I don't ever use it. Um, I am strictly DocuSign, but that's why I have two options here. So if you do not have dot loop hooked up, you won't have two options like I do. It would just now do this part. I'm going to click on this DocuSign one right now, but for those of you that don't have dot loop and you click on the start transaction, it would automatically then do this. Start circling and then a new tab will open up and take you into DocuSign. Now, when you connected your account for the first time, it should have helped you set up an account, a password and everything. So in this case, it's asking me to log into DocuSign. So there's my email that I connected through command and then my password is saved from Chrome. So click log in and this is going to take me directly to the documents tab in the room of DocuSign. So right now we are in DocuSign and not in command. So you guys can see my opportunity name came over. Here's Bob Jones test opportunity. 
Now, one thing that I like to do, and you will see where this plays a factor later, is I do go ahead and go into the details, and I double check that, and I click the edit button, and there's a couple things that I do. Number one, I put in an address, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use 123 Main Street, Avondale. I guess there really is a 123 Main Street in Avondale, that's why I do that, so. Um, the county's not as important, but Again, I'll show you guys later why having the address in there is kind of cool. So um, I'm not sure what that postal code is, so I'm going to hold off. And then I like to scroll down over here on the right and get to buyer one. And perfect. So they've done a better job in this situation. Bob Jones, his phone number, and his email came over from command. So that's awesome. One thing that hasn't, the last time I checked, um, but I haven't had a uh, two buyer contract recently, but the last time I checked, if you did have a co-buyer in command, it had not brought that co-buyer over um, here. So um, just one second, guys, sorry. That's one of our agents that he's asking about DocuSign. Um, tell him the link is in our events page. Okay. Um, so um, if your buyer two is not in there, um, then you know make sure you add them in here, right? Uh, you know, so make sure you just double check and see if that pulled over from command or not. Um, so that's why I like to double check this. In my case, I am only doing, you know, one buyer. He did pull over. I put in my address and then I'm going to click the save button. Okay. So at this stage, I can now click on the documents tab and come back over here. And this is the part that everybody's like, yeah, this is what I really want to know, right? Is how can I add some forms? How can I write an offer and how can I make it easier? So if you guys remember, I did um, kind of make a, like if you looked at the details page, um, let me see if I have that up. So I promised you guys that we'll talk about how to connect DocuSign. So we just did that, how to add documents, fill them out properly and send them for signature and how to create folders to minimize confusion of all your documents. So um, one thing that I want to show you right now is Right off the bat, DocuSign itself has all of the AAR forms, right? All I did over here was click this blue add button and your options to add documents are computer, DocuSign forms, zip form, and Google Drive. Again, um, not to create any confusion, I am going to be talking about zip forms. I made that a promise here in the detailed page that we're gonna show you how you can leverage that to make things easier, okay? But right off the bat, you go, okay, I'm logged in. I really need to write an offer right now, like this second. Right here, you click on the DocuSign forms. This is gonna pull this up. And just be a little patient. This screen, for some reason, has been a little delayed. So if anybody else has experienced this, um, if you're just patient, uh, the white box will eventually pop up, or at least it has in my experience. And then if it never does, um, what you want to do is, you know, refresh and, and try again, but, um, so this could be one of those times. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hit the refresh button. Again, that refresh will keep me where I was and now try DocuSign forms again and Give that one more go. Huh. Sorry, zooming in and out of the page to see if it's a issue there. Sorry about that, guys. All 
I don't know if you guys have been experiencing this lately. Now you will find out from me. I've been because I've been using zip forms. That's like that third option on there lately. Um, maybe why I haven't experienced this as much if you guys have as well. So I'm sure this has to be just an unfortunately kind of refresh thing. And so I do want to get it to work. So just bear with me. I'm going to refresh until it does. Jill, I know you're here with me. Have you had this happen to you lately? It's been real slow lately. Has it? Yeah. I'm checking it now to see if mine it, yeah. comes up. Got it. Yeah, I'm trying not to be impatient right now. <laughs> So in the meantime, while I'm trying to get this to work, um, we may, maybe I'll revisit here in a second. Cause I, again, obviously this is a very important part of it. Not sure why this is glitching like this. Okay, so I'm gonna add a document from the computer to see if that helps in any shape or form, like at least, I'm gonna go computer, and I'm just gonna find like a H or a, like a prequal form from somebody just to add something in here to see if that helps get the room going, as weird as that sounds, but. Okay, I'm gonna give this 10 seconds to see if um, that helps it let the white box show up. I did have one time, I remember I, I opened it and was not in a hurry. I think I just went to another tab and came back, you know, kind of a thing like this. And when I came back, it was there. Um, so I just want to double check that I'm not being too impatient, but that is uh, something I'll definitely need to get figured out for sure for you guys. Um, if you guys are having that problem, if you're watching this video and it's something that you're, please keep me updated because these are the things I definitely want to be able to figure out for us so okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle back around and see if maybe I have some luck later with there we go finally there it popped up yeah okay maybe I was just being completely too impatient although that has slowed down a little bit okay so when you add a DocuSign form you will get these two boxes library in here we have library and group and then in here we have forms so if you are on library our library options will be AAR, Armless, or KW574AZ. If you go into groups, your options will be standard buyer forms, land and lot, uh, land and lot listing forms, landlord listing forms, standard listing forms, and tenant. So that was another thing. Uh, you know, kudos to Jerry for doing that for us as well to help you know, minimize having to look through too much. But I want to go back to library so that you guys understand that if you go library forms and then go AAR, every single AAR form is in here. So very long scroll list, right? So if you know what you're looking for, like if I know I'm looking for the buyer advisory, I can type that and hit check. If I know I'm looking for the residential purchase contract, I can type in residential and there's the purchase contract. Um, I know the buyer advisory now has market conditions in it, but in case you want your market conditions, I just want to show you guys a few examples, right? HOA and HOA is unique because HOA has the periods in it. So you want to make sure that, so I'm just going to use those for example, uh, for right now and go ahead and click add. So once you select the forms you need, whether you go through groups or the library, you go ahead and hit the OK button and that's going to refresh and put all of our forms here. And I'm just going to go ahead and say like the residential purchase contract, just so that loads up real quick.
So this is the DocuSign version of the purchase contract. And when I say the DocuSign version, I mean compared to like zip forms, because I'm going to show you guys the zip forms too. So this one is the DocuSign. And in here, you can see that the buyer's name came over and the address came over. So that was one benefit of putting in the address, right? And you can see that all these other areas are blank, okay? So this is the time in the in the training that I'm gonna let you guys know why I'm using zip forms and why you may be interested in doing so as well. This all being blank is very tedious and what's taken me from 15 minutes to an hour to write an offer is now I have to go through and say, hey, you know, earnest money to be applied to down payment, right? And um, by certified funds and uh, wire, transfer and by loan of by um, new loan of buyer's choice right so I'm pretty detailed in my purchase contracts right and obviously have these memorized from having been using DocuSign recently <laughs> you know so I, I there's practically not anything that I don't fill out even if it's with dashes because I was like um, you know, because I just like to make sure there's not something that, you know, the other side could fill in on accident or anything like that. So, um, so again, you know, obviously don't want to spend too much time on like, you know, what's everything you put into a purchase contract, you know, that's, that's for another day. Um, what I do want to make sure is you guys see that that's how you can start filling things out here and you start putting in your price, all your terms, conditions, etc. right? Once you've filled out the purchase contract to your liking, Again, you know, everything, including the agent's information on the last page, right, and your own information. So, right, it, my name carried over, but still plenty to fill out after that. So go ahead and you hit save and close. And then you go ahead and you repeat for each of the other uh, pages, right, so, uh, all your other forms. So you go and make sure your market conditions is good, your agency, you know, if you need to do the Obviously, HOA, you're not supposed to do page one, but if uh, HOA wasn't provided to you in the MLS, you know, you can go fill out page three and all that good stuff, okay? So I do want to show you guys, and hoping this doesn't take too long, I'm going to try to be patient again and give it, it's, you know, 15, 20 seconds, but I want to make sure that everybody here is aware there was that third library option of KW574. Um, we did, you know, the market center has uploaded the documents that are more brokerage specific um, into that group. So in that group, you have your pre-possession and post-possession, um, wire fraud, our ABA, you know, if you're using Magnus Phoenix title, um, you know, so the ABA is in there. And um, I believe also, you know, other disclosures like for, um, you know, Luke Air Force Base and such. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and click on it for you guys so you can see real quick what's all in here. So there's the ABA, wire fraud, lease commission demand, Luke notification map, uh, post recordation of possession agreement. That's our you know, post possession and pre possession. So we do have those in here. So basically the only thing we haven't provided to you in here for, as a brokerage is the W-9. But I know Jerry had sent that out to everybody individually. So, and if you don't have that, always feel free to reach out to Angie or I and we can get you that W-9. So that's the only thing that's not in here, but all the other forms are in here for you to be able to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel for right now. Oh, actually honorable mention, because these are forms in here and not just PDFs, um, if you selected one of these, actually, I'll go, I'll go ahead and do the ABA. If you select one of these, these are ready to go for when you go to the signature stage that they already have your buyer and or seller's signatures in place, which is really cool. So, so I'm going to show you guys how to make a folder real quick because the folder part is nice for organizing um, and not going completely crazy because this can fill up pretty quickly. So what you do is you go over here to the action section and I'm going to add a folder and I'm going to call this DocuSign 
forms. Okay. While I'm at it, just to get it out of the way, I'm going to add a folder and call it zip form forms. And you can imagine you can call them whatever you want. I like to also add a folder and call it executed docs. You can see it's even here saved as a little Dropbox for me because I type, use it so much. And this, why this is important is once you get something signed, if, if you do something like me, do executed docs, um, if I, I'm gonna go ahead and say, this one is executed, this purchase contract, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and drag it up to here. There we go. Okay, so I have nothing in DocuSign, nothing in zip forms, a ton in room docs, and one in the executed docs. So you go, okay, well, why is that important? Why would you do that? Other than organizing over here in the DocuSign room, later, once you have things signed, um, you know the names can double up. It, for those of you that have used it, you have like buyer advisory, and then buyer advisory dash signed. Purchase contract, and then purchase contract dash signed. So when I split them into folders like this, when I come back to command and here, right, PQF, when I click add file, you're gonna see that you have a manual option. So I could go look for that in my computer. I have a DocuSign option and I have a custom folders option. So if I uploaded anything into the custom folders over here in command, you could look for them as well right here. But here's my example. When I click on DocuSign, you guys are going to see I have a root folder, room docs. That room docs, this folder right here, room docs, is the quote unquote root folder. So if I scroll, check this out. Here's executed documents, the folder that I made in DocuSign, and there's that PQF, right? So instead of having to look through all of this mess and, hey, is that the unsigned one or the signed one, I can easily come over here and say, oh yeah, I put everything in the executed doc, so this must be the right one. Click on it and click assign. And just like that, I got my PQF, the right one, right there, right? So that is the reason that I make folders. Okay, now, if you ever wanna move a lot at once, I'm gonna go ahead and check mark all of these. You can come over here and up here, you're gonna get some options. Do I wanna DocuSign these? Do I wanna combine them all? Do I wanna email them? I have emailed them to clients directly if, for them to review before signing. But if you click on Move, you're gonna have a box come up, so Move Documents, and you can see all the forms right here, and I can select a destination. And in here, I'm gonna go Folder in Current Room, and then, in this case, these are the DocuSign forms, so I'm gonna go ahead and click DocuSign and click Move. And now I have nothing in my root folder, right, that room docs at the moment, and I have a bunch of DocuSign forms in the DocuSign folder. So if I come back over here to Command, you guys can see how real-time this is, right, that little refresh, DocuSign forms, they're now all there, and there's the same one for executed. Right, so command and DocuSign talk really well in that regard. That is an awesome feature to save you from having to like hit download, come up over here, drag it. Right, so okay, so you've now filled all these out and you want to get them signed. So you go ahead and you check mark the ones that you want, just like that. Okay, again. We're all assuming here that I've gone in and filled everything out the way I want, right? We've, we've added the forms, we've filled them out, right? Filling them out for a whole nother class, but we've done that. We're here and we check mark everything. And now we're gonna click on DocuSign, okay? So this is the step to get your documents actually into what they call an envelope to prepare to send to your client for signature. As you know from DocuSign likes to be very kind of obvious in their, the way they kind of name things, right? So you got DocuSign, you know, have an envelope that you're going to put everything in to deliver to your client for signature. So right here, we go ahead and we click DocuSign. 
and this is going to completely change the screen and, and take me to the envelope. So it's like we're in getting everything prepped to send to our clients. So it's getting everything ready. And this is what an envelope, you know, the envelope stage looks like in DocuSign. So I'm a big fan of naming my envelope exactly what I'm going to have my uh, form. I'm sorry, my subject line to my client B. So I'm going to call it and say one, two, three East Main Street um, offer. And what I like to do, just for sakes of you know saving time and not having to retype anything, I go ahead and I highlight all this. You know, I do my control copy. I go past this for a second down here to the email subject, and I highlight this so that when I hit paste, it replaces it. There I have DocuSign 123 East Main Street offer. I'm okay that my envelope name is the same as my subject line. Okay. Hasn't had any negative impact for me for the, you know, the envelope name not being something different or, you know, very rarely are you going digging for the envelope name later. So just a heads up there. Now, the other thing that I like to do is make sure these are organized in a way that I prefer. So like, I don't want my purchase contract to be the last document they see. So you can grab these like cards and drag them over. So I'm a bigger fan of, hey, I want you to review the buyer advisory because I want you to pay attention to that and know all, all the things you should know before you sign this contract. And same with the market condition if you use it. Um, and, and then, you know, I personally like the purchase contract then being after those two, um, having my HOA, you know, whether I needed to add it from the MLS or leverage the forms. Um, I did not select agency earlier when we were going through the forms, but I would then have my agency and then this ABA, right? If you did forget, a f like let's say you have something downloaded on your computer and you go, oh, actually I have the, the prequal and I forgot to add it to the room, but I need to add it and get it signed by the buyer. What you would do is click right here on more and do upload. If you happen to use Google Drive and have the prequal saved in your Google Drive, you can also add it that way. You can also use a template. Um, so a template, you would have, so there's no confusion. If I use, say, template, these were created, okay? So you can see shared with me. So I don't want there to be any confusion about the template. Um, for you to use templates to have the purchase contract like have things already filled out that you really enjoy. There is no way to use templates and add them to the DocuSign room to kind of save you on all those things, like the things I started filling out on page one, you know, to be applied to down payment and all that, unfortunately. So I have some, you know, over here, I have some templates that I use as a team leader to send out to new agents, like to fill out. So you guys can see these, but. So not, don't confuse those as like, oh, I could upload the purchase contract, fill it primarily out, because then you won't be able to do the other things that are not uh, boilerplate, like your purchase price and the address and all that. Room docs would take you to, so remember earlier, I didn't select the prequel. So if you did upload to the room, but you just forgot to check mark it, this is how you could go and see what's in the room and add it. But again, the more common thing is, hey, I downloaded the prequel to my computer from the lender, but I need to get it signed by the buyer. So there, I just went to upload, you know, in my case, I'm going to just use the same form, but yeah, pretend that's an unsigned one, right? And hit open and it's going to refresh it and get us here. So once I have all these all good to go, um, Um, once I have these all good to go, I now need to specify who my recipients are, right? In this case, Bob, right? Now, if there's anybody else I needed, you know, um, you know, if, when you're doing a listing, right, you need to specify yourself as someone to sign because we have, you know, the MLS input, the listing agreement, you know, so we have a few things that we need to sign on the listing side. On the buy side, um, Right off the top of my head, without overthinking it, uh, you know, you have your lead-based paint is one of the forms that you we need to sign as buyer's agents. So, uh, but if you know your signature is required, this is where we're going to be doing this. Right, is add recipients. It is extremely important that you guys understand how awesome.
pre-tagged roles are. Okay. Pre-tagged roles will help you minimize a lot of busy work and it will, and I'm scrolling up for a reason, but it will add the signature spots to a lot of these forms for you. It will not add it, for example, to the pre-qual form if you uploaded it, right? Because it doesn't know what that PDF form really is, right? To DocuSign that form is just a PDF and, you know, but on the forms, right, every single one of these, you know, it's going to know to say, oh, we have initials and signature spots already predetermined, pre-tagged, right? And so you go ahead and you click on pre-tagged roles. And that's why making sure your buyer one and your buyer two or your seller one and your seller two are filled out in the detailed page. Because when you come here, I'm able to hit this drop box and you're going to see available recipients, right? And I got myself in here and I have Bob, right? So when I click on Bob's name, he is now assigned to as buyer one in all those pre-tagged roles. So if I, um, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, I know it's not the biggest, but if I put my mouse over the documents, it tells me every document that is being impacted by these pre-tagged roles. So buyer advisory, HOA, the KW 574 ABA, um, market conditions, and the purchase contract. Pretty much everything but that prequal that I uploaded from my computer has pre-tagged roles. If you had a buyer or two, you would want to make sure to select them here. And if you had a document that, like the listing agreement, uh, the lead-based paint, um, the MLS input form, if you were using the one, uh, you know, just an example, lead-based paint is going to be the biggest one in the purchase, I'm sorry, the listing agreement will be the two biggest ones that you'll actually, you know, you personally create through DocuSign and use the forms from the library. Um, other things like the MLS input, you're downloading that from the MLS, so it'll be a PDF, so it won't auto pre-tag stuff. Um, but if you do have any of those documents, you would then, you know, look, it typically says listing agent here, and then you would select yourself as a listing agent, right? So in this case, just dealing with a buyer, I only have the one, Bob Jones, so I'm going to go ahead and add selected. If you did not have somebody added back on the details page and you go, yeah, I'm not going to be able to take care of the pre-tag, but I still need to add someone, um, I'm going to give you guys uh, an example. Um, so you have two options. You can just add room participants, but it won't pre-tag anything. So it's the same thing you're doing here, just it won't, um, if there is a pre-tagged spot for them it won't do that if you use room participants but it's going to look for the same people right you can see all the names are the exact same from the other page or you can add by email and that's what popped up this box so when you click email address pops up one of these so i'm going to delete one of them so who's a good example to put in here i'm just going to borrow my transaction coordinator nicole right so I may put Nicole and say change this to receive the copy, right? So she's not going to be signing anything. She's just going to be, when this is all done, she will automatically get a copy as well, which could be good depending on your relationship with your admin or your TC or anything. Um, you may even put the listing agent in here, right? Let's pretend that this isn't my transaction coordinator, Nicole here, but she's actually the listing agent. So I could say, hey, when Bob is done signing, just automatically send a copy to the listing agent. Now, the cool thing, you can use the more here. Uh, hold on, before I click that more button, let me explain. Down here is a generic email message. You could say, hi everybody, uh, please find the DocuSign session for the offer on 123 Main Street. You could then come over here to more and say, add private message and say, hi, Bob, um, here is the offer as we discussed. And if you have any questions or concerns, just give me a call, right?
perfect close private message added and then here's the listing agent or my transaction coordinator or whoever add private message so hi nicole um i cc'd you on these signed documents from my buyer this is our offer on 123 main street right so now when she when nicole gets a copy it explain you know she's got that little private message which is cool um bob has his own private message and then everybody has you know here is the docusign for the offer on 123 east main street is a generic one and everyone would see that okay so now we have our documents we have envelope name we have our documents we have our recipients and we have our email message and even private messages to each person okay if you're not ready to continue and deal with making sure the signatures are all in the right spot and you need to get out, this is the only page in where you can save and close and not lose all your work, okay? What if you came to find out your buyer told you, you're like putting this all together and your buyer says, yeah, you know what, never mind. I don't know if we really wanna write an offer on that home. You can go to the actions and delete from here, just FYI, in case that comes up. Save and close if you wanna come back to it later. And what we're gonna be working on right now is the next button. When you click the next button, it will now refresh into the actual assigning signatures, initials, additional text, all that stuff, right? So you can see here, the first thing is the buyer advisory because I asked it to be the first document, right? And so let me scroll down to the last page and look at that, right? Bob has a, already has his signature box and date placed in here for me. And why was that? Because I used the pre-tag role option earlier and DocuSign already assigned signature and date line um, tags already for buyer one and buyer two and the same for seller one and seller two if it applies right so for those of you this will save you a ton of time um, if you haven't been using this already or didn't know about it right now i do recommend the date signed is really really long because it does the date the time it's like this very long stamp so i'm a big fan of moving it over just fyi so that it doesn't like creep too far to the right um, so just just a friendly recommendation there i mean it's not the end of the world if you don't it would just you know maybe creep into over here so bob's signature for this page is good we now have the purchase i'm um, sorry the market condition and you can see signature and date and same thing you know i would scoot this over and now we have the purchase contract and so what are we going to verify that Yep, initial, initial. So hopefully some of you guys are got a big smile on your face if you had not been using this already because right, this is the annoying part is dragging initials to all this. So here's a very good example, right? We have white boxes here. And why do we have that? Because we've allowed the buyer the option to select which one applies. The good thing is the house either is or is not built prior to 1978. Um, your client nine times out of 10 will skip over this and not do either if you leave it optional. I highly recommend that what you do is, I'm gonna say my house was built after 1978 and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the this one and hit, you guys won't be able to see me do this, I'm just hitting the delete button on my keyboard. Okay, then I'm gonna click on the one that I do wanna keep. And over here on the right, I wanna do required field, okay? And now that one's required, checking for all my other signature spot, uh, initial spots, doing good so far, everything is there. The one for the home warranty. And now we are a page away. Yep. So great, right? Every initial spot is where it needs to be, and then boom.
Okay. So you double check, make sure. Now let's get down to, uh, on this one, for example, right? Um, there's page one left blank because they didn't provide it to me. And then page three. So I like to use the HOA to show you guys an example of the following. His, his signatures are there, but what if I forgot to fill out page three back in the room? Can I leverage any of this stuff to fill it out? Yes, I can, but you need to be very careful, and I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. Number one, um, let's say I forgot to put the seller's name, right? And we're gonna say the seller is Jane Smith. When you use a text box that you do not want to be messed with, you need to change it to read only. The required field, it's not important if it is or is not checked um, for this case, the read only is important. If you don't do that, he, the buyer could go in here and retype something completely different, just FYI. Checkbox, you can do the same thing. Hey, we wanna have the seller pay for that and we wanna have the seller pay for this. And you can go ahead and check mark each of these, okay? And do read only, just like I did the other box so that they can't uncheck it, okay? Here's another problem, or not problem, but just be super conscious about this, okay? I like to do this on my HOA and seller to pay for any fees not disclosed to the buyer on page one of this addendum, okay? So, I use, I use the text box to fill this in because I forgot to. I even change it to read only and not required. I'm like, oh, okay, perfect. If you have a buyer two, FYI, if you have a buyer two, sorry, I, I wanna make sure, number two, right? Like a second buyer who will also be signing is what I mean by that. They will not see this box, these check marks, or this box in their signing session. And that could be a problem, right? You got a buyer signing documents that aren't completely filled out. So how do you fix that? So you click on this box and over here on the right, you need to go down to collaboration. And under collaboration, you need to check recipients can collaborate. And you got to do that for each of these. The nice thing is that once you open up the collaboration Dropbox, it stays kind of right there. So now I'm on the checkbox. Now I'm on the next checkbox. Oh, okay, it grouped them all together, which is nice. So uh, all those are impacted. And now my other text here, again, scroll down, recipients can collaborate. Now buyer number two would see those during their signing session, just FYI, okay? So please be careful with that. It would be really bad to have people sign documents that they had no idea you put this additional text in, okay? And now we get to the uh, ABA. Remember, I was kind of bragging about that. See, we the tag rules have been put in for you guys, which is awesome. But now we have our PDF, right? Our prequel. This one has been signed, but let's say for you know, let's pretend it's not, right? So you just come over here, Bob Jones signature, drag it over here, just like that. Same with the date. Same with initial, if you needed an initial, right? So that's how you just add, you just drag over to the spot you need. But as you saw, a lot of my work was taken care of for me by using pre-tagged roles, which is fantastic, okay? Once you're all done, if you wanted to make sure that a recipient is having a good experience, you can click on recipient preview and show everybody, no, I'm sorry, not show everybody. You can view what the experience is going to be for the, this person, whoever's in the Dropbox, right? I only have Bob Jones in this case. So I can click the start button and see what they're going to experience. So I went ahead and jumped all the way down to the buyer advisory and see now here is the experience for the buyer. I go, oh, perfect. Hopefully they wait for the pages to load and actually read it, but we know some buyers just like to click away. 
So again, you can totally wait for these to load up so that you can make sure everything's in the right place. But for time's sake, I'm not gonna wait for all of these pages to load. But you can now see what that experience kind of looks like for the client, okay? That is how I learned the hard way that I went to do this, went on buyer number two. I don't have one right here, but if I did, and when I went to the HOA, I saw that they couldn't see all that stuff that I had leveraged with buyer with one text box. So that's how I learned that, unfortunately. Uh, a little bit the hard way. It wasn't the end of the world, but I learned that the hard way, just FYI. So you're all good here. You say, yep, looks great. You can even view it in different formats, like what's it going to look like on mobile and stuff. But I'm going to exit out of here. Okay, very important to know. Remember I said the envelope page is the only one you can save and close. What if you did all this, filled everything in, all the pre-tagged spots for signature, and you go, it's not ready, it's not time to send it. If you let this time out or exit out, you got to do it all over again. Sure, some of those were pre-tagged. In my case, not a lot of work, but my uh, the things that I wrote on the HOA page and the this one right here for the prequel would not save. You need to hit the back button, go back to the envelope, which hopefully won't take too long here, should normally reload here in like seven seconds. And back in the envelope, I hit save and close right here, okay? You need to do that for it not to make you restart. Here, I'm going back to next because in case um, this part wasn't obvious, I don't wanna make any assumptions here. You're happy with everything, you wanna get it going, you click the send button, right? And that would go to Bob for signature, he would sign everything, and then it would come back to me it, Bob would get a copy of the signed stuff that he just signed, and so would Nicole, because I had added her to receive a carbon copy of everything, right? So just like that, you click the send button, and you've sent off your DocuSign. So we now want to, I'm going to exit out of this for uh, time's sake, so not keep hitting a bunch of back buttons. I'm now back in command, and I now want to go to transaction again. That's how you can revisit the DocuSign room very easily, right? You don't need to log into DocuSign or rooms.docusign.net. You don't need to then go to rooms and then find the room. You can just go to your opportunity and get to it very easily. So here's a real life um, situation. You are on the listing side. Okay, I want you guys to adjust your mentality here. You're on the listing side. You got offers from a, you know, you got an offer from an agent and, and a buyer, right? And you go, yep, my clients like it and they want to sign it. So you go, am I going to have to upload them here, you know, one by one? Do I need to download them from the email to my computer, come over here, click computer, upload them one by one, or is there an easier way? And the answer is there is an easier way, an extremely easier way. So let's go ahead and this ID, if I hold my mouse over it, you can see copy and paste this room ID number into your email subject in order to send documents into this room. So I can highlight this. I can go to an uh, email. Let me um, here, let me do this actually. Uh, Gmail.com. Go into my email. And I'm going to find an offer just real quick, right? Just a good example. Uh, 1061 is me offer. Okay. And Deborah right here. Okay. Offer on 1061 East Mead Drive. All right. Hey, Alex, here's our offer, right? And there's everything she sent me. Okay, real detailed. And I go, man, I really don't want to, have to go through all that, download it, upload it. So you can go here. We all use different email stuff, but this is Gmail, right? But the point is all the same. Go to forward the email from the agent. I'm now going to come down here and edit the subject. So that's going to pop out a box. Still keeps all the attachments. And I'm literally just going to paste that ID code from the room and where I'm going to send that to, I'm going to show you guys is 
in DocuSign, if you have not done this yet, you click on your initials up here. You go to preferences. And in preferences, you do inbox details. Okay. And here you make yourself a DocuSign email. You can see at mail.docusign.net, and I just chose to do alex.fajardo, okay? And you just type in there, and it'll let you know if what you've typed in there is available or not. So, and then you hit save changes. So now, when I'm here, I go alex.fajardo at mail.docusign.net, and my room ID, and I just hit send. Because that's a lot of documents, I'm gonna move on to the next section and then come back and show you that all those documents have been added to my room. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to the room and show, talk about zip forms for right now because that is gonna take about two minutes to send me all those forms, okay? So we go here and zip forms. So why do I wanna talk about zip forms uh, in this? So number one, what is zip forms? Zip forms is what a lot of us in Arizona were very comfortable in using um, like for many years, right? And then dot loop came out or um, some other kind of docu, you know, like the a brokerage either made their own or whatever, right? But we, you know, can date back. I mean, I've, again, I've been around for eight years and I just learned on zip forms, right? So it is an NAR benefit. AAR chose to stop partnering with zip forms um, directly and uses transaction desk, but NAR still offers this as a benefit, okay? So you can sign in with your NAR username and password, um, create an account, and when you do that, you can link that account. When you have that login information, if you click on zip forms, it will then ask you to log into your zip forms account. So again, why do you want to do this? You go, are you asking me to log into another platform to just write an offer? And yes, I am, but let me show you why. So when you log in for the first time, you will have no transactions, right? Here is the amazingness about this. With a little bit of setup, you guys can go over here to templates because here's a little unknown fact is that even though AAR decided not to offer zip forms personally, NAR still does and AAR is still required to send their updated forms to zip forms per NAR, okay? So you can see in my templates, I have KWNE listing and KWNE purchase, okay? So for time's sake, Please keep in mind, uh, instead of me creating a template from scratch, what you do is you just click new, say, well, are you trying to make a template for a listing or for a purchase, right? So when I click on purchase, I can go ahead and pick a name. You guys saw that I called mine KWNE purchase, right? It was residential. And I, this is the most important part. <laughs> Auto apply, automatically apply this template to purchase slash residential new transactions. If you check that and hit save, it is now going to make you uh, a template room to go work on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my existing one. When you get in there, you're not gonna have any forms in there, but over here on the right, all forms, you come over here, and exactly like in DocuSign, buyer advisory, right? You can see I already have mine picked. Um, agency disclosure. I even have my inspection. But my bins are in there. I can go residential purchase contract. Got that in there, right? So you do all the same thing. You get all the forms that you primarily use on a purchase contract. It doesn't have to be all of them, right? The ones that you go, I'm going to go write an offer. And when you do that, now you come back over here and you go in and you fill out everything that is a little bit more consistent across every time you write an offer, right? So you go down here 
and you guys can see in my template, no buyers, no listing address, because that's all spe specific to that time that I write that offer, right, that property, that client, but to be applied to down payment by certified funds or wire transfer, by loan of buyer's choice, you know, line 69 through 114, hey, with, uh, within 24 hours accepted contract, you know, I check mark personal check. Obviously, I need to change that if that's not going to be true, but that is my experience eight out of 10 times. It's definitely going to be with the escrow company. You guys can see I, I put in some dashes on this line that never gets used unless it's time to get used with a post possession, right? Um, the check marks didn't check mark anything because that is property specific. And I went ahead and put, hey, I seen it property on the MLS on. You know, and then I put date needed in capital, so I switched that out. But just put something there because more times than not, some kind of appliance is being provided, so saving me from having to type that. Um, put some dashes and a lot of you know seller concessions. I put dashes if I did. You know, when I use the template, I can easily remove those dashes and put something in. But in case I'm not asking for anything, I typically am not using this check mark, so I put some dashes there. You guys are getting the gist, right? Here's my title company, right? So I got my escrow officer address, all that good stuff uh, for Phoenix title, all already pre-filled in there. None, right? That None that were recommended to definitely put there for your buyers. You can see all the dashes. I did my home warranty that I'm used to asking for, right? Buyer ordered, seller paid. <laughs> A couple, right, HOA, seller agrees to provide page one of the HOA addendum within 48 hours accepted contract. Seller agrees to vacate the property 24 hours prior to close of escrow, all other terms and conditions. So just a couple things that I use consistently. And my information here, right, my name, my uh, license number, all that good stuff, okay? So the purchase contract's the real, like the big one, right? Like that's the one which that's so annoying to fill all that stuff out. But, you know, agency, now, not having to put in the brokerage's name and your name, you know, they're at the top, right? Oh, speaking of, I guess I had not done that. So, perfect example. I go ahead and hit save. And then once that save box goes away, you're good to go back. And same for anything else, right? Agency, HOA. I, I pre-filled my HOA with what my page three would look like if it's not already provided in the MLS. So you guys kind of get the idea, right? This template I made in zip forms is all saved in my purchase template. And then I did the same for listing, right? My listing has my ER. Um, I did an addendum just in case, uh, agency for them, disclosure and HOA, right? So have all the same thing and same thing. I want it to apply automatically when it's a listing, okay? So once you have these two templates and that auto, auto apply, when you come back here to documents, right, I'm going to refresh the doc, this page real quick before going to zip forms so that you guys can see that me emailing myself to that, doc, that uh, DocuSign email and using the ID, check this out. There's all the forms dropped right into the room for me to now be able to checkmark, go to DocuSign, and get my client to sign it. You now because these are PDFs, you're not going to be able to use pre-tagged roles, right? That is one thing, right? Like you're going to have to drag the signature and the date on every little required spot for your seller and the initials. Um, just kind of one of the things, unfortunately, when on the listing side, right? But at least you saved yourself from having to download all that to your computer and then having to upload it one by one. It all just got sent over in one easy move. Huge time saver on the listing side, right? Not to say it's not on the on the buy side too, but especially you know, look how many documents that agent sent me, right? So at least they're all there for my transaction coordinator or for me to use later. Now, go to add, go to zip form. This is where the magic happens, right? This is why I would recommend you have an account with zip forms and create your template. So I clicked on zip forms. I've already linked zip forms, right? So I've already logged into my zip forms account. So my option here is link a room. Well, I need to click create. And because I put the address in the details page, remember way back in the beginning, it went ahead and 
put it as the room details for me here in zip forms. I say this is either a purchase or a listing. It is a purchase. Select property type, residential, and I click create. Now, just like the DocuSign one, it's like, okay, will you select the zip form location in which you'd like to add documents from? So I go zip form library or linked transaction. So let me explain this part right here while the screen is up. We created a transaction slash room in, in zip forms as well, right? When I click that create button. So when it says linked transaction, I want to click that because there, remember I told zip form when I make a purchase transaction, add this template automatically for me, right? So here I have buyer advisory, HOA, market conditions, all the same ones from DocuSign, right? Like no different, just this little darker blue icon, right? And now I say, yep, give me all of those and go ahead and click add. Now, no different than DocuSign. If I didn't do the link transaction and did the library, I could go pull those one by one from zip forms, but by then, but then you're just kind of repeating what you can do in DocuSign already, right? So I go down here and you guys remember I made a folder because see how this can get all messy and intertwined. So I just check mark all these. Let me actually add a, a folder. Oh no, I already have a folder, I'm sorry, that's right. Um, so I'm gonna move these to the folder, my zip phone folder, right? Just so they're easier to take a look at. Okay, so I think you guys already can assume what's happened, right? I added those, those zip form documents here into my DocuSign room. They came from the template I made. So when I click on residential purchase contract, this is gonna open up a box, just exactly the same like if you were using the DocuSign form. Just gotta give it a second because what's it doing, right? It's basically pulling in zip forms to show right on top of our DocuSign, right? So there's zip forms plus. And there's my purchase contract, right? Scroll down and it put in the address for me because the address was in the details. Um, it didn't put the buyer for me. That's okay, not the end of the world, but check out, here's my template, right? Right here in DocuSign, here's everything that I've filled out. So all that stuff I showed you in Zip, on the ZipForms website automatically pulled over here, just like that. So now when I go DocuSign room, I use ZipForms instead. I create a, a transaction right right there in DocuSign. I pick up the link transaction forms, which are the ones that I primarily use, and all my stuff is pretty much typed out. And now I just gotta go and put in all the property specific stuff for my buyer, right? Just shave myself easily, probably 15, 20 minutes, you know, having to go through and do that stuff. Um, it's just tedious, right? It's not that it's hard, it's just tedious when you gotta fill in all that stuff. And now you got all the agent. So I'm gonna show you guys another trick. This one costs money, so I understand if you don't do it, but I want you guys to know about it. So I'm here in the purchase contract. This is what I now do is, so I hit the X button because I haven't changed anything. If you do, you hit the save button. Um, oh, actually, hold on one second, return the form. Uh, this wasn't here before, nice. So. MLS Connect is a feature through ZipForm that will talk to Armless and bring in the information for the property for like that listing, okay? This costs $25 for the year. So yeah, like literally just a notch over $2 a month, okay? And you pay it up front one time. 
And if you don't have it, I assume when you click on this, it'll tell you you don't have it and like send you to a cart to pay for it. But if you do have it, what you do is, um, so my MLS user ID, for those of you that have had MLS long enough, you know that in your profile, there's like a different password that sometimes applications ask for. It's like, it's called your RETS password, R-E-T-S. Um, so you would, to set that password, you go to armless. And over here in the top right corner, where your initials are, you click on that, you go to my profile, and you set it right here. Here's the RETS setting, okay? That's where you set the password required for here. So I don't know what this password is, if I'm being honest with you guys, because uh, I did it like a, like a month ago. Um, so I'm just gonna assume. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick on my listing, okay? And use that MLS ID and show you how awesome this is and why to me it was worth $25. And then we'll be all wrapped up guys. Sorry, I know we're running a little over an hour. I got a little bit late start, but wanna make sure to show you guys all this on one video. So use my password that I set in my RETS, residential, put the MLS ID and I click find. Yeah, okay, hold on, sorry. I thought I knew that password, but apparently I don't. So, okay, just like that, I easily set it. Come back over here to DocuSign and click find again because now that password should work. So when this is all set up and this is done finding, you're gonna see all this fill in, right? and including even pull the MLS picture over here on the right, which is just a, the picture doesn't help you in any shape or form, but it's just cool to verify that it's the right property, right? <clears throat> so I, you saw how quickly I got the error before, so now we know that it's actually working really well. And so just like that, yep, 1061 East Mead, Chandler, 606, 475. Um, I actually don't, here, bear with me just real quick. I'm gonna not use my listing. Uh, let me tell you why. Because then it's gonna pull my name into the seller section and I wanna show you guys, um, I wanna show you guys somebody else's. So I'm just gonna pick this random property here. So let me do this real quick. Yeah, this is cool. The MLS Connect button wasn't here before. I had to go back to Zip Forms and use MLS Connect, but uh, this is cool. It's now right here in DocuSign, so that saved me one trip back to Zip Forms. Basically, I don't need to whatsoever now. So here's all this information: 71st Street, Scottsdale, 625, Agent ID SG128. I'm going to click Import, and I'm going to say yes. Go ahead and replace all existing data that this import would do because I haven't filled in anything for the property yet. So I'm okay with that. Your MLS data has been imported successfully. And check this out. There's the address. There's a legal description filled in for me, accessor's number. And then scroll all the way to the bottom and there's the agent's information. There's, yeah, this was Scott's property, right? So there's Scott's info, there's our brokerage logo, his everything, right? So between ZipForm template and MLS Connect, templates is free, ZipForms is free, MLS Connect, $25 for the year. Uh, you can literally cut out like 80% of the work on writing an offer. I'm now back to writing an offer in 15 minutes. It's a great feeling. <laughs> so, so that's how you do all of that. That is everything in DocuSign. Um, I know we have a couple people in here, so just thought I'd double check. Uh, who has any questions about anything that I just went over? Everybody's good, yeah? 
Jill, Chris, not sure if you guys are talking, you guys are, might be muted, but just a heads up, I haven't heard anything, so. <laughs> Thanks, that was great. Perfect, okay, awesome. That, uh, that pretty much covers everything in here. Um, you know, if, if later I'm kind of thinking about this class and I feel like I forgot anything, you know, I'm, I'll be happy to redo a video and everything, but that was everything that I could cover in an hour to help streamline, you know, the writing make it so much easier for all of us to put an offer together, you know, and or listing agreement together. So, so I appreciate you guys stopping by. And if, uh, and again, anybody watching this recorded, if you have any questions after just email me, you know, comment on the Facebook post, whatever it may be. So, so I appreciate you guys. And uh, thanks again for stopping by Chris and Jill. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Take care.